tepid over here either. Exactly. Well, thanks very much indeed. All right. Well, indeed, while the United Kingdom has been struggling to cope with unusually heavy snows, Australians, as Lola mentioned, sweltered in record-breaking heat. Now, what is triggering this extreme weather and how much of it is due to climate change? Joining me to discuss the issues, Marlo Lewis from the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a global warming skeptic, and Kurt Davies from Greenpeace. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, Marlo Lewis, first of all, uh, is it the case that you don't believe in global warming at all, or do you consider it merely to be global uh, alarmism? Uh, <clears throat> no, I do believe there is global warming, although global warming has uh, slowed down over the last decade, which I think is interesting because none of the climate models used by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to forecast global warming over the 21st century anticipated a roughly 10-year period with no net global warming, uh, which suggests so that those models may be too sensitive or too hot. Right. So if it's slowed, by, by which mechanism are you using to evaluate that? Well, just the, uh, the, Hadley, the Hadley data and the data, which is uh, land, land uh, surface data mostly, and also the, uh, the Alabama Huntsville satellite uh, data, the NASA satellite data. So two data sets confirm that basically there's been no net warming since 2001 and or none since 1998 if you want to include uh, a year with a very big El Nino. All right. Kurt Davies from Greenpeace, um, I suspect that you're going to disagree with that. Do you believe that global warming has stagnated almost or slowed since uh, 2001? Uh, Marlo, people living in the real world see global warming every day and in fact what the science is telling us is that it's worse than we thought. Um, all of the modeling projects exactly what we're seeing. That is extremes in weather, extreme heat waves like we're seeing in, in the winter in California, loss of snow cover, uh, the protracted drought in the southeast in the United States and all around the world, extreme typhoons, uh, hurricanes, Things are getting worse, not better. And it's also a misnomer to look at just warming. I mean, in fact, the warming is worse at the poles. We're watching the ice caps uh, break apart. Polar bears are being left without ice to walk and feed and, and uh, live on. And this is affecting people in their, real, in their lives. You know, farmers are not planting crops in California this year. That means the food supply is threatened. And in fact, what the IPCC found is that poor people around the world are going to be affected first and worst by global warming. That means their lives are at, at risk. It's a dangerous distraction to say that global warming does not affect people or is not as bad as we think it is. Craig Davis, so presumably then you're not going for uh, Marlo Lewis's assertion about the kind of data that he, he Marlo, follows and recommends. Marlo is not a scientist. He comes from a think tank that also worked for the tobacco industry to, de to deny that smoking causes damage. He took money from Exxon for over a decade, two million dollars plus. Even Exxon dropped Competitive Enterprise Institute from its funding ranks because they were out of touch with reality. Well, if I could just well, get well, a word well, in edgewise here, Kurt also, his organization also went through the trash of my colleague uh, Chris Horner who has had a best-selling book um, I, I wonder if he would. Uh, I wonder if he thinks that's good scientific etiquette. Look, if you're going to talk about the real world, the important thing is here that if you look at mortality rates and aggregate mortality levels related to extreme weather events, aggregate mortality has declined 95 percent since the 1920s related to extreme Again, weather here. like hurricanes, tornadoes, heat waves, cold spells. In other words, with respect to extreme weather, the world is getting safer and safer all the time. If you look at mortality rates, how many people out of a thousand die because of an extreme weather event since the 1920s, the, the decline has been 98 percent. Now, somehow explain to me how that translates into a, an impending global catastrophe. That's the real world we're talking about, Kurt. Thankfully, well, governments of the world are not listening to you, Marlo, and they're moving ahead with a strong a push to solve this problem here in the United States. The Congress is moving and hopefully we'll get it right. I was about to say this is about the easiest debate I've done because I could just let you talk both of you for the next five or so minutes. But let me ask you, um, if I may, Kurt Davies, I mean, th there are those who say that this 
who is the best time to try and deal with the impact of global warming. That's obviously those who believe that it's taking place, that despite these tough economic times, despite the recession, that it is the possibility is actually within our grasp now to tackle global warming um, once and for all. Is that a view that you share? And if so, where do you see the money coming from? Uh, it's tricky, of course, with economic trouble, but we do think this is the time to turn the corner and start investing in a new energy economy that both takes us off of our addiction of fossil fuels and moves us forward towards job base that is sustainable and green. Uh, the money will come from taxing polluters and making sure that we put a proper price on the, the uh, basically the right that polluters have taken from us to fill the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. And we think that there is a, a, a strong push from the public to move on this issue politically. Both presidential candidates in the United States were running ads that could have been Greenpeace ads during the campaign, mm -hmm. pushing for a clean energy economy and, and solutions to both mm -hmm. climate change and environmental security and economic security. Marla Lewis, a final word from you, if I may. I mean, the, the assertion there that both candidates in the presidential election recently held in the U.S. were running ads that Greenpeace might have run. Well, both candidates were seriously mistaken, and, and so is Kurt when he suggests that we can have a, the equivalent of a massive new tax increase in the midst of what a lot of people believe is a global depression, and that somehow raising taxes, especially on energy, which is required for the production of all goods and services, is going to somehow be a stimulus package. That's a de-stimulus of the, of, the, of the first rank, and the people who are going to suffer most are the poor people, especially if we follow the prescriptions of people like Kurt and ban coal-fired power plants in developing countries, which uh, in many, many of those countries don't even have electricity. So I don't see how protecting them from global warming by denying them affordable electricity is going to improve their lives. I don't see how that, 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 that figures at all. Well well, we have about 10 minutes left on this program, and we could happily let uh, both of you talk until then, but I suspect you wouldn't find any common ground for agreement. So, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. But Marla Lewis and Kurt Davies, thank you both very much indeed for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Now, a slight change of...